rewarding careers, experiences of a lifetime. Explore Travel PT at ariusmedical.com. A U R E U S medical.com. NPTE Study Cast. Uh, welcome to NPTE Study Cast. I'm your host, physical therapist Jimmy McKay. Joining me on the program today is physical therapist Eric Bellum. Eric, welcome to the program, man. Hi, how's it going, Jimmy? Thanks for having me. What's your background for the audience? Where do you get to work? Who do you get to work with? Well, I'm a physical therapist with Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I am within their sports and orthopedic team. As I started off with doing my orthopedic residency with Ohio State and eventually found my way here to Cincinnati, where I help out with our sports and orthopedic men residency here at Cincinnati Children's. Thinking way back to when both of us had to take the NPTE, uh, there's something that, yeah, it's a long time ago, <laughs> but uh, there, there's topics that come up on there in terms of special tests, and that's what we're going to talk about today in terms of, we're going to focus on upper extremity special tests, orthopedic tests. When you describe a topic or you're working with a, a student physical therapist or perhaps a resident, how do you bring up the topic of using special tests within an evaluation? I like to think of special tests as kind of the cherry on top of the cake. So you have a subjective and objective measures, which really are kind of make up your cake and your icing. And you're going to use those special tests as kind of a, a cherry on top. You're trying to prove that final point to either yourself, a physician, your CI at that point. So they're kind of used there as the the extra. So they should not be used as your, this is now my diagnosis because this test is positive, or I can completely rule this out because this is negative. It's just that extra piece of the puzzle. I like the cake analogy. Who doesn't like a cake analogy? Uh, but really focusing on the evaluation skills. So do you want to start with a specific test or tests, and then we can uh, kind of get into how they're used and how we interpret them? The big thing to think about, especially within our upper extremity tests, you have to kind of look at them for what they are. So to dig a little deeper, kind of knowing your sensitivity and specificity, which then leads to likelihood ratios, kind of know what you're looking at with your tests. Alone, a lot of them are not spectacular, if we can appreciate. They're not great in that standpoint. So you got to try to cluster them in different parts. So if we look at the different groups of tests for our shoulder, you have kind of those subacromial impingement, rotator cuff, labrum, instability, AC joints, and scapular dyskinesis. I always try to think there are, there's literature out there that kind of looks at different clusters of these, but the more you can kind of cluster together, the better. And you, you mentioned a bunch of words that even now make my palms a little sweaty, but <laughs> um, you want to make sure you have them clear. So when they pop up, you know what they mean, and you can deduce what the test is actually telling you or what it's not telling you. So do you want to review those words a little bit? Sensitivity, specificity, oh. and then likelihood ratio. Sensitivity and specificity, and that goes back to our stats. The easiest way I think about it is you think, remember your spin and snout rule. So specific tests are help to rule in diagnoses where sensitive tests are used to rule out diagnoses. So we're looking for a test to have a specificity of about 0.9 or higher to be considered you know, an optimal specific test. And the same thing with the sensitivity test. We're looking for that sensitive test to be 0.9 or higher. So that doesn't mean our 0.7s and our 0.8s aren't good tests. They're just more of that moderate route. Looking past that, the next level of kind of statistics, it looks at likelihood ratios. And they actually are taking your sensitivity and specificity and putting them in a big old equation uh, that you can go back in your book and look at. Likelihood ratios, are going to consider both sides and they're going to look at kind of the quality of the test. So a positive likelihood ratio, again, is helping us to figure out, can we rule in this diagnosis? And if you can find a positive likelihood ratio of five or higher, you're actually looking at a pretty solid test or realistically a pretty solid cluster of tests is the big part. Negative likelihood ratios, you're looking for a 0.2 or lower to help rule out a diagnosis. And just so everybody knows, this is an audio resource, but we do have infographics and study flashcards. If you look at these show notes of this episode, you'll see an infographic for free for you to download personally when I was learning these and trying to make sure I had these before the NPTE. I did listen to them, but I also wanted to look at them at the same time to make sure I was getting those words right. So when they popped up on the exam in front of me, I knew I was completely confident. Treatment examples. A treatment example that I like to use is, like I said, it's kind of at the end of the test. So I'm looking at where am I putting this in? You know, so there, there's the art of the exam versus the kind of the build of the exam where we're realistically doing more of the art once you get outside of PT. So you can't be doing all of your range of motion, standing supine sitting, and then all of your strength, standing supine sitting, then all your special tests. So I like to kind of think of them towards the end of my evaluation where I'm looking at what is my 
subjective and ob objective led me to. So what I'll do is have kind of my special tests written out in those clusters that I'm looking at. Subacromial impingement is kind of the big one. We look at a bunch of different tests within that. Hawkins-Kennedy, painful arc, uh, weak external rotation, empty can, and near sign really aren't great tests in themselves. But when you kind of cluster them together, the numbers get better. Again, still not perfect, still not something I can say this is for sure it, but I can start to put them in that place. As you move down the different diagnoses you're trying to rule in or rule out, you have to make sure you know what your test is saying. So when I talk to my students and my residents realistically about what do you need to know about special tests is know what you're assessing, know what the positive test is, because it's not necessarily always just pain. And then what are your numbers behind it? What, what kind of weight can you put behind it when you start to think of this within your exam? Here's your example question. So special test X has a positive likelihood ratio of 12.1 and a negative likelihood ratio of 0.8. What is this test good at doing? So is it good at ruling in a diagnosis, but not ruling out? Ruling in and out a diagnosis? Ruling out a diagnosis, but not ruling in? Or neither ruling out or ruling in a diagnosis? So this is a great question because this is a really good sample structure of where you need to go through and number one, go through the question and make sure you know what they're asking you. Don't know the content and then just fail to, to actually recognize what the question is asking. A special test X has a positive likelihood ratio of 12.1 and a negative likelihood ratio of 0 0.8. What is this test good at doing? That's the question there. So ruling in a diagnosis, but not ruling out. Ruling in and out a diagnosis. Ruling out a diagnosis, but not ruling in. And finally, neither ruling out or in a diagnosis. All right, Eric, what do we got? Okay, so this test is good at ruling in a diagnosis, but not necessarily good at ruling out. So if we go back to our likelihood ratios component, remember any test over a 5.0 is what we're looking for here. So a 12.1 actually puts that pretty high in that group. And again, you'll see this a lot with some of you start clustering these groups back together. That I'm looking for, once I have this positive test and it really kind of goes together with my subjective and objective, you know what, now I'm feeling pretty good about that, di that clinical diagnosis that I'm making. Now, the negative li likelihood ratio of this is 0 0.8. So that is a little bit higher. So remember, we want less than a 0 0.2 to kind of rule out a diagnosis. So this is not something that I can say, you know what, if they're a negative, I can't say I'm ruling this out. If it is a negative test, all I can say is I'm not ruling this one in. So again, good at ruling in a diagnosis, but a negative test does not necessarily rule that diagnosis out. Excellent. All right, taking a look at those special tests. We did mention we have the infographic available for you in the show notes of this episode for free. Eric, appreciate you stopping by and helping shed some light on this topic. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. Download free study guides now at ariusmedical.com slash NPTE studycast. A-U-R-E-U-S medical.com slash NPTE studycast. Rewarding careers, experiences of a lifetime. Explore travel PT at ariusmedical.com. NPTE studycast. Brewed by the PT Pinecast.